Okay, buenas tardes. Um, so my name is Doug Midori, I'm with uh, Dyne Research. Uh, so we were uh, formerly Renesis, if you've heard of Renesis. Uh, we were acquired by Dyne in May. Uh, Dyne is an internet performance management company. And, um, and so Renesis still does the same stuff that we've always done. We still have the blog, um, a lot of people follow. And now we have a yellow background to our slides uh, now that we're, we're part of Dyne. But um, the talk today is about uh, the five, uh, 512K uh, primeros impactos. The uh, first impacts uh, is the routing incident in August. Uh, it had to do with the, the growth of the, of the global internet, the, specifically the, uh, the, the global routing table. And um, uh, before I get to that, you know, since I've been here in the last couple of days, a lot of people have asked, uh, is this my first time to, to Chile? And in fact, it isn't. Um, I was here uh, uh, nine years ago. When I was in graduate school, I had some more hair on my head, and uh, uh, I worked for uh, for two months in the R&D office of uh, of uh, uh, Grupo GTD. Uh, this is uh, myself with uh, Senor Casanueva, this is the founder and CEO of uh, of Grupo GTD, and uh, uh, the team engineers that I work with uh, uh, taught me a lot about uh, working in ISP as well as uh, just uh, the local area, San, uh, uh, Santiago, and um, taught me some local local terms like palte and uh, piscola and uh, cafe con piernas. And uh, if you don't know the last one, ask a chileno. Let's see. Okay, so like I said, this is a, a, t a talk about the, uh, um, uh, maybe bro more broadly about the, uh, the growth of the global routing table. And so here's a, here's a plot. So as a as background for people who aren't familiar with, uh, for, uh, Renesis' uh, work in, in routing, routing analysis, or uh, now, now Dyne Research. We have um, we collect uh, routing data from about uh, we have about 450 peers around the world to give us uh, full tables, and we do analysis on that. Uh, we, we, set, we have products that we uh, we sell based off that data. Uh, what this plot is is uh, looking back about six or so years. Uh, the uh, the size of the global routing table that we were receiving from uh, from these peers over time, as you can see, it's kind of growing up and to the right as you would expect. Uh, the red line marks what we're uh, calling the consensus global routing table. So this is, uh, you know, um, when we get uh, a full table from a, from a peer, we're gonna get a lot of uh, either internal routes or specialized routes that they send us. So what we're, what the red line, the consensus routing table is to try to um, uh, count the number of uh, prefixes that were, uh, are, are part of the, glo that are globally routed and seen by everybody, if not nearly everybody. And so that is the, uh, the red line along the, the bottom. Um, now to put some numbers to it, so uh, the, the y-axis, uh, uh, it's very hard to read, so we've put in, just as a frame of reference, this uh, horizontal yellow line, this 512K uh, line for where, where we are as far as uh, uh, that uh, threshold we'll talk about in a minute. But over the last uh, six or so years, we've gone from, in 2009, you know, 200,000 some uh, routes uh, all the way up to 471,000 uh, um, in uh, 2014. Uh, the, the growth has been uh, generally stable, although you can see there's, there was a kind of a, an uptick uh, between 2011 and 2012. And perhaps that was uh, due to a, um, uh, a panic around IPv4 exhaustion, or uh, uh, maybe just a lot of people started routing additional routes at that time. Um, if we were to extend this out, uh, and try to project based off of uh, previous, uh, uh, what we've seen previously, we would expect to see, uh, you know, in uh, 2015, we'll see a global routing table of uh, five, 519 and uh, with another you know, uh, 48,000, so uh, new routes uh, coming online in, the, uh, in this year. And uh, the, so, so the, the issue with the 512, if you're not familiar with this, there's a, uh, um, for some older routers, there's a memory limitation, it's a TACM uh, limitation of just how many routes they can uh, store without, um, now this can be overcome with an upgrade, but there are routers out there that still have this, uh, this limitation. We actually uh, encountered this in 2008 with a um, 256K uh, a limit, and, as, uh, and in 2003 with a 128K limit for anybody who was around at those times. And we probably will see a uh, you know, 1,024K limit um, uh, maybe, maybe sooner than we think. All right, so, uh, so the 512K is, an, um, the, fi the, 512K is uh, the day that um, 
our estimate of the global of the consensus uh, global routing table crosses the uh, 512 uh, threshold, and we expect that to occur probably in the next couple of weeks. Um, and uh, um, let's see. And if we look at um, so some of these, these plots were done a, uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, and so on uh, the 6th of October, the consensus estimate was uh, about 507K uh, uh, routes. There's about, um, these are growing at a, about a, maybe less than 1,000 a week. So we can kind of project that out to maybe now we're, uh, I don't have the number offhand, but probably around five, uh, 510. Um, and uh, you know, of our peers, uh, uh, we have 61% of those have a carrier routing table. Uh, that's greater than that consensus number, and then 23 have already passed the 512 threshold, so uh, they've already uh, faced the, uh, um, uh, this issue if they, they had any old routers that needed updating. Oops. So uh, the 512, uh, yeah, this, the day in August where we uh, uh, had, this, had this issue, um, you know, on any other day, uh, this might be a, a normal, normal event. Uh, there are routing leaks that occur uh, just about every day. In fact, there's one going on right now in Vietnam. Last week, there was a big one in Bolivia. Um, so uh, uh, these, if you're not close to the, uh, the threshold of uh, 512K, uh, then it is, it, not, not that many people are, are, are affected. Uh, that was not the case on August, uh, August 12th. So um, there was a, an incident where, uh, uh, we had uh, Verizon announce uh, um, about almost 30,000 slash 24s, a deaggregation of its uh, already existing address space. And um, this is a plot of, uh, uh, this, is also, this is also on a log scale, of, of announcements and withdrawals per second uh, that, we, uh, that we observe. And so this is a three hour window around the, around the time of the incident. So first we see uh, in green, these are, are the announcements, the red are the withdrawals. Uh, first, there's a, a spike of, uh, of announcements as, uh, as the Verizon uh, routes start to propagate across the internet, followed by uh, immediately by uh, uh, outages that, are so, uh, that show up as withdrawals, and then uh, eventually, within about 10 minutes, uh, Verizon begins uh, uh, withdrawing uh, the, the aggregated route, uh, the, the aggregation, and, uh, and then things start to go back to normal. Although there's a, there's a, a period of instability that, that follows this as um, uh, some of these networks are, are start to come back online. They got knocked off. So uh, on that day, the, uh, the the consensus routing table was about 500,000 routes. Uh, again, it was AS701 that uh, announced uh, that uh, put out about you know, 30,000 uh, uh, slash 24s. And for about 10 minutes, we had a, a consensus global routing table that was about uh, um, 528,000 uh, routes. And uh, and then problems started to occur at that time. So if we looked at the, uh, just the withdrawals, this time series from the, a couple slides ago is the red, red dots. Um, we saw uh, a, a couple of peaks um, in, in this, in this uh, peak of, uh, of withdrawals. One is uh, uh, the impact and the follow, uh, of, of outages, and one is uh, just the uh, withdrawals of the, the, uh, the aggregates. But if we looked at the, uh, uh, the prefixes that, that started to experience withdrawals uh, that weren't part of the, uh, the aggregation, I guess I'm hitting this. There. Set it down. Um, <coughs> we, can, we, we see about 24,000 uh, other prefixes that were impacted at this time. If we took those and put them on a map, and used uh, some geolocation tools, uh, as Carlos uses, um, we see that a lot of them were in the U.S., uh, Russia, China, uh, in South America. You know, we had hundreds that were impacted in Brazil and uh, Argentina. Uh, some of these are, uh, many of these are momentary uh, impacts uh, as a, uh, a route fluctuates and comes back. Um, and then some of these ended up being lasting, lasting for a little while. Um, if we look at another way that we look at these um, uh, impacts of either uh, just performance Gosh, I'm not even touching. Um, uh, we look at performance or outages. We use our, our trace route infrastructure. Uh, so this is uh, we have about 150 servers around the world. Each one is uh, basically performing trace routes to the entire internet every day. So in total, it's uh, somewhere on the order of 100 million, 200 million uh, trace routes per day. 
And so this infrastructure gives us a lot of insight into uh, looking at paths of traffic and what happens when there's either a routing incident, an outage, um, uh, and, uh, and so we can look at some of the impact of this, uh, some of the outages that we saw. All right, so uh, here's, a, here's a first example here. There was, there was a handful, but we'll just uh, touch on a few. Um, Dimplecom is uh, one of the, the big three wireless uh, carriers in Russia. Uh, their primary ASN of 3216 was unaffected, but one of their regional uh, ASs uh, went offline completely for about 20, 20 minutes, beginning at uh, 749 UTC. Uh, so this graph is just uh, uh, measurements of traces going into that network and, uh, and a period of time when none of them would complete, and then they came back online. Um, and so the colors are based off of what provider uh, um, those traces went through to get reach uh, AS21335. Uh, and uh, so here's a, a couple, we can also go down to look at the, an individual router or a router interface uh, um, to be more precise that just disappeared uh, at this time. So this is a CNC group, this is China Unicom. Um, and so we have an IP address that just, uh, just disappears uh, beginning at that time and comes back about an hour later. Uh, and the China Education and Research Network also had a, a, a router that um, uh, disappeared. Uh, PacNet suffered a lot of, uh, uh, um, they, were, they were brief, but uh, they were, uh, uh, had instabilities and outages in uh, the Far East. Uh, its uh, it, its uh, operations in South Asia seemed to be uh, stable, but um, there were a lot of different carriers in, uh, in the Far East that were impacted. Bayan is in the Philippines. Uh, so they had a, a couple of dips where they uh, lost connectivity. Um, and, uh, um, and then also this, the, slide, the graph on the right is, uh, these are counts of trace routes uh, per, you know, per minute uh, going into PACnet. So these are, these are aggregated. <laughs> I don't know how to, something's advancing the slides without me. Um, so the, uh, uh, these are traces coming from uh, either our servers inside the cone of, uh, of PACnet or, uh, or, or traces just going into PACnet that uh, hit this uh, router that, that just seemed to disappear for about uh, 20 minutes. So uh, any discussion about uh, global routing table uh, growth over time uh, kind of uh, prompts a question about uh, bloat of, uh, of the global routing table. These are routes that are kind of um, uh, excessive or serve no purpose, and so I'll uh, we'll look at uh, um, one one way of looking at this, uh, uh, and look at a few different countries of uh, the percentage of the routes out of those countries. How much of them are are uh, unnecessary by by this by definition? I'll I'll tell you. So the uh, the the amount of the global routing table that is um, uh, contributed by uh, Latin America is about it's about 14 percent. So uh, this is not the the largest. Um, uh, Large amount of routes that uh, uh, don't necessarily come out of Latin, Latin America, so we can't blame uh, the growth of, the, of uh, um, the global routing table entirely, entirely on uh, Latin America. But um, uh, since we're here, we'll talk about uh, um, uh, some some bloat in in this in this region. So I'll define, uh, and you can quibble with me on this, but um, uh, define a, a, a an unnecessary route as one that if an AS announces a, a route, and it also announces more specifics of that route that are handled in an identical fashion. So there's not, uh, not just is the IP address already covered, but also they're, they're, not, they're not announced in a, they're not propagated across the internet in any different way. So if you're on the other side of the internet, this is gonna look identical to you, uh, whether, uh, if you had an IP address that was in either, either of these routes. And so we'll call those, um, uh, call that bloat. And so if I were to rank the number of, uh, uh, rank countries by the percentage of the global route, uh, routes that come out of that country, by how much of it is unnecessary, uh, then uh, I had come up with these, you know, these are the top five, uh, we Brazil, Argentina, Peru, Ecuador, and, uh, and Chile. Um, and on the other end of the spectrum, we've got Mexico and Colombia, two very large uh, uh, national networks that have uh, very little of this um, uh, in, their, uh, in the routes that um, come out of the providers in their, uh, their country. So we started with uh, Chile, I'll just talk, uh, talk about a couple of these. Um, uh, so the graph on the on the right here is uh, the number of routes uh, over the uh, six to seven uh, years that, uh, of routes that define the Chilean internet. There's a couple of peaks here where there's a uh, uh, there's a, uh, a routing leak. For example, February 12th there was a VTR Bandache uh, routing leak of a, of a couple thousand uh, routes um, that 
push us down the, uh, uh, the, the the graph here, but um, the the um, the graph on the on the top is the uh, the number of uh, unique IP addresses represented by those uh, uh, those routes. And perhaps uh, you know if we were to look a few more years into the future, as IPv4 uh, is exhausted and uh, there are no more IP addresses to be routed, uh, we would expect to see that uh, that upper uh, table start to uh, the, the upper plot start to table off, while uh, we may still have more uh, more routes as people start to slice the, the same space thinner and thinner. Um, uh, that would be you know, we'll, we'll see if that that comes to be, or maybe we're starting to see it now. Um, so in this case, uh, you know, I just picked who had the the um, had the most unnecessary routes by the definition of the previous slide, and so that was also VTR Bondanja, not to pick on them. But um, you know, 81 is uh, out of out of a few thousand is, is um, not so bad because uh, uh, there was worse. Um, so in in Brazil, so Brazil is represented by about 25,000 uh, prefixes, more or less, uh, and um, and by this by this definition, is about uh, uh, nine and a half percent of that is uh, is uh, is bloat. Um, and so. Um, the worst offender here was uh, there was about three that were at the top, but the first worst one was uh, Tim Tim Brazil, and so the example I give, and you can go and check this to see how we're how we're doing this. Uh, um, so we have the slash 19 that's announced by Tim only to it's uh, only to its uh, um, uh, parent company, which is its uh, uh, primary um, transit provider, Telecom Italia. It also has a, a covering prefix of a slash 14, and the two of them uh, are, are propagate across the internet in the exact same fashion. So again, someone from the, uh, the, the other end of a, of a uh, um, uh, sending traffic using, using these routes, these, these are um, telling them the same information for an IP address in that slash 19. Uh, Argentina. Um, uh, we had, Cablevision, Cablevision uh, had about 500 uh, unnecessary prefixes. Uh, this is the, the, the slopes of uh, the IP addresses of, uh, that are routed in, uh, oops, uh, this plot should be Argentina, excuse me. Um, the, uh, and an, an example route of a slash 19 and, uh, um, uh, and the covering prefix of a slash 14 that's uh, routed identically. And then uh, finally, Peru and Ecuador. I, I add these uh, partly because uh, there's really just um, uh, this, this worst offender is um, uh, the uh, um, that accounts for almost all of the the, uh, the bloat in those uh, um, uh, countries. So Movistar, Movistar uh, um, Peru, and uh, TV Cabo in uh, in Ecuador. Um, those are those are just about um, just about all of the the unnecessary routes are from those guys. <laughs> So, <clears throat> bringing it back to the 512, uh, so the conclusions, uh, the, uh, um, you know, these, the, the networks, uh, the ASs that we saw impacted uh, in August uh, are likely to suffer again uh, if, uh, if they didn't make any upgrades or um, we'll see uh, pretty soon in a couple weeks because we think that the, uh, uh, the consensus uh, global routing table is going to surpass 512 routes uh, in the next couple of weeks. So we'll see if anybody has the same outages that they did in August, and then we'll know. The only difference uh, is that in, uh, at least in August, uh, that was a 10-minute incident, and so you could go back and uh, you, uh, people could identify where their problem was and fix it. In starting when this, when we cross this threshold, it's never going to go back, so it's going to be permanent. And uh, that, if uh, if somebody had not made that upgrade, uh, they would have could have some problems. So um, I think that. Concludes uh, my talk. Thanks. <laughs>